Hi, Preeti. How are you? Hello, sir. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I'm good too. Thank you. Can you tell us something about yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Preeti Pondwe. I have completed BE in IT and uh, currently I'm working as a QA engineer in Inspiro Technologies at Vidya Vihar, Mumbai. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a QA, my roles and responsibilities are to gather mm -hmm. the requirements and uh, uh, to design the test cases, to do test execution to uh, perform the different types of testings and to report the bugs and to perform the entire defect life cycle uh, till the defect it is uh, get closed uh, and uh, also to perform the API testing, performance testing. So yeah, this is mm -hmm. all about. Okay. How do you start your day? Can you tell me in a brief about your daily roles and responsibilities, right? From starting from the day, maybe you, you are writing test cases you are going through the sync up meetings so how how do you spend your entire day with your roles and responsibilities so uh, in the beginning of the day we have a from meeting uh, uh, in which uh, we discuss the, all the uh, means the uh, progress of mm -hmm. the task which we are uh, doing currently also which are the uh, difficulties we faced or uh, any major issues we found mm -hmm. so we discuss those and also uh, we clarify our uh, doubts with our manager okay yes okay great so whenever this question is asked to you in an interview like how do you spend your day so you have to tell in a nutshell right so everything let's say when you start your day you were telling you are attending some sync up calls daily sync up meetings you might be attending it then you might be going through the emails you might be going through the task list or jira uh, task list or jira tickets that are assigned to you and you have to work on them if you don't have to work on jira tickets maybe you have to work on test case writing if you don't have to work on test case writing maybe you have to work on test case execution right then once your test case writing or test case execution is done, you will be taking up task number two. In that task number two, maybe you are supposed to uh, go through the story, understand the requirement and come with a set of questions to be asked to business analysts or project managers. Maybe that, so these are different kinds of roles that you have to tell. Okay. And it would be good if you try to explain such things in an interview. Yes, definitely. Right. Yeah, interviewer will come to know. Okay. You are not audible. Hello, now, now am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, so when you, when you tell all these things in an interview, so interview will be happy and he will come to know, okay, uh, she is actually having good, uh, uh, ex good, good hands on experience of testing of various things, right? Maybe test case writing execution, and you can also tell test case review. Maybe if you are reviewing some of the test cases, right? So those all things you have to tell. Okay. 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 So, how much you are comfortable with uh, manual testing, and how much you are comfortable with automation testing? So, in an, in your entire day, do you spend your day with fifty percent of activities in manual testing, and fifty percent in automation, or how is it like that? Actually, uh, your voice was breaking in between. I was not able to. Now, yeah, now, no am I audible? The second. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the question is, uh, how how do you spend your day? Do you do, uh, do you do manual testing activities for the entire day, or do you do test automation related activities in the entire day? Uh, most of the like seventy to eighty percent we do manual work. Okay. And apart mm -hmm. from that, uh, we do the automation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, man. Yes, yes. You you want to say something? Yeah, most of the time it's mm -hmm. manual only. Okay. And uh, automation is less. Okay, okay. No worries. Now, how will you test any of the application? How will you validate any application?
uh, which kind of application? Any any kind of application. Let it be a banking of... based. Yeah, banking based application, e commerce based application. Let it be the uh, any any software or any kind of application with any domain. How will you test it? Which are the various steps that you will follow while testing any application? First, we have to uh, analyze the requirements and uh, accordingly uh, have to design the test cases uh, to think about the various scenarios in different mm -hmm. modules and functionalities. Mm -hmm. And later on, um, uh, perform the test execution for those uh, functionalities. Mm -hmm. And then we report the bugs. Uh, and after that, uh, when developer fixes it, then we have to test it or retest it some, uh, sometimes. Correct, correct. So apart from this... And if it is working properly, then we'll, mm -hmm. yes. yeah, we'll close that box. Correct, correct. So this is the defect life cycle that you were telling. You are finding defects, the developer will fix it. And if it is working fine, you will close it. If it is not working, you will reopen it. Now... If you have to test any application, so for that first first thing is you have to analyze and you will have to review the requirements, right? You will review the requirements for the application to ensure yes. that yeah you understand and what the application yes. is expected to do, what would be the flow of the application, what would be the behavior of that functionality, right? So that you will do. Then you will create a test plan. You will create a high level plan that what all things you will perform, what types of testing you will perform right it will also include what kind of test cases you will write what test data you will use what would be the expected results right then you will set up a test environment right you will set up a test environment in the test environment actually you will try to create a a, a mirror image of the production environment right so you will be able to test the application under real time behavior real time scenario real time conditions right then you will run your test you will analyze your test results you will report the test results to your higher management right and then you will repeat if they need you to do for any such kind of other things right so this will be the high level guidelines or steps that you will follow when you have to test any particular application right is it fine right yeah am i yes. audible yes okay okay great now uh which types of testing you will perform in the application which is banking based functional and non-functional both yes yes in functional um, and non-functional which which are the different types of testing you will perform uh, in functional, we have a retesting, regression testing, mm -hmm. testing, sanity testing. Okay. Uh, in uh, non functional, includes the performance at the application, mm -hmm. in which includes the load testing, endurance testing, spike testing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the cross platform testing. Correct. Yeah, this could be have to mm -hmm. perform. Okay, and in non-functional, which ones, uh, which type of testing you will perform apart from performance? Apart from performance, mm -hmm. database testing. Okay, but uh, do you think database testing is a non-functional testing? non-functional testing are you sure uh, uh not sure sorry okay no worries so let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video is database testing considered as non-functional testing or functional testing okay so preeti will you will you perform security testing as a part of non-functional testing as it's a yes, yes. security testing as well yeah yes. because people will use it for money transfers yeah so yes. it's it's one of the high priority tasks for the organization to develop the app in such a way that it meets standard security guidelines right so security testing comes into the right yes, yes. Okay. okay now can you tell me high level scenarios of money transfer let's say you are transferring money from one account to another 
you have money transfer feature in the banking based application which are the possible test scenarios for a money transfer feature let you will test transferring money from one account to another mm -hmm. uh, first uh, uh, we have to analyze the uh, mm -hmm. yes yes please high level. yeah we should we should collect the proper test data first for for uh, to transfer the money from uh, one account to another Mm -hmm. So we have a proper data of account one and account two, let's say, and uh, then uh, for the uh, high level scenarios, we will uh, test it uh, in the net various networks as well, or uh, we can put the uh, ne uh, in negative test. We can uh, <clears throat> we uh, we will perform that the uh, by uh, passing the negative uh, data. Or incorrect data uh, uh, for the account one and account two, or vice versa, we can do it. Uh, and also, we have to check the uh, time period, or uh, um, means when the transaction get failed, what the behavior of the application, or the how much time user is able to perform the uh, failure transaction failure, or what happens after the. Uh, a uh, certain limit of the uh, failure transactions uh, that would be performed mm -hmm. okay so uh, whenever you are trying to transfer the money from one account to another you will have to you have two options either you can open the application in your mobile or you can do uh, the transfer from the website right so you will verify the banking website url is working fine the url the banking website URL should have HTTPS in the address bar and in the URL, right? Then the uh, the bank login page should have the username and password. Then the user should be able to transfer the funds using that option during the 24-7 based yes. on the feature. If it is available from 12 hours or 20 hours, it depends on the feature. But actually, ideally, it should be 24-7, right? online money transfer feature should be there then uh, you you should be able to transfer using neft using rtgs option right for nationalized money transfers yeah very different yeah so yeah different the, payment options yeah different payment options right then you uh, can also we check these able yes, to, uh, please please go ahead yeah deduct the money uh mm -hmm. We are able to deduct the certain amount or how much time we are able to deduct it. Uh, what is there any limit for that transaction? Mm -hmm. Also, is it going in a negative uh, values mm -hmm. or uh, we'll check. Correct, correct. Then you can check the amount of time it takes for funds to be transferred between in, in business hours and when you are transferring in non-business hours right then you can check the inter right. interbank fund transfer that happens instant instantly or not right then maybe uh, you are getting some otp in the required amount of time or not then uh, when when the payment or the transfer is to be done with a bigger amounts then is it asking for pan card or something like that right so those are the yes. also you can check the notifications it has been going to receiver and as well as to the sender right so those kind of test scenarios you can perform okay now these were the manual testing related questions that you can get in an interview now let's focus on some automation as well right what is the difference between method overloading and method overriding the method overloading uh, having the same uh, uh, same name of the uh, methods uh, also with the same uh, type of arguments mm -hmm. uh, and uh, data types and in method overriding uh, we have the same name but the different uh, arguments uh, it's having the different uh, body uh, are you sure is it correct sir uh, yeah yeah I'm, I'm just confirming with you if you're sure then we will proceed further Yes. Okay. See, actually in method overloading, methods must have same name, right? But signatures are yes. different. 
in method overriding methods are having same name again but same signature right yes so i think you twisted uh, both the definitions right so um in method overloading the return type can or cannot be same again it depends right but we just have to change the parameter in method overriding the return type must be the same okay then same. Uh, if if you are having a private method or if you are using a final method then it can be overloaded while private and final methods cannot be overridden okay argument list should be different right while doing a method overloading but argument list will be the same in case of method overriding right then uh, then method overloading is a compile time polymorphism method overriding is a runtime polymorphism runtime polymorphism yes correct okay now what are packages in java have you heard about packages uh, hmm? yes um, hmm. packages are the hmm. language util package a java.io package yeah yeah so what are those packages java hmm. the the pa packages are useful when we are going to uh, import them while writing our code Mm. So it's a, I think it's a kind of the library, uh, which inbuilt uh, functionalities are there. We are going mm. to use in our program, uh, which provides a different uh, classes and methods. Just for example, the Java dot util, which provides us an array list, uh, mm. functions, um, inside it. We can, uh, we can use it by importing that package. Right. So, so yeah, you can import it, those packages in automation, right? So you can write those lines and those packages will be imported. But what are actually these packages and what is the significance of these packages? I'm not sure, sir. Mm -hmm. No worries. So this is a mock interview, right? So if you get this kind of a question in a real time interview, so you can tell packages uh, in Java, it's actually a method, it's, it's actually a mechanism, I would say, to encapsulate a group of classes, sub packages and interfaces, right? So why, why are we using packages? So I was asking you the significance of packages, right? So packages are used for preventing naming conflicts. For example, there can be two classes with same name, uh, for example, two classes with same name as bank, right? In two packages, right? So those things can be uh, those things can be prevented. Then packages are used for uh, data hiding, data encapsulation, right? So uh, that's why we are using packages, yes. right? Okay. Okay. So this is packages. Okay. Now let's say if you have to uh, automate a drop down option in Selenium. Okay. So how will you automate it? You have a drop down option in a web page. That drop down option contains various uh, list. For example, various banking names: Access Bank, SBI, then uh, HDFC, ICICI. So, how will you automate that drop down list? Drop down. Yes. Yes. Hello. Are you talking? I think we have to use for the uh, mouse actions for selecting the drop down options. Uh, like, uh, uh, action dot click, I think. Uh, no, actually, if you have to automate the drop down option, you will, those will be implemented using select tag or input tag right in html website those will be implemented using the select tag so okay. what you can do is you can use select class in selenium right in select class you will have various options of uh, uh, various methods are there for handling the drop down uh, operations you can uh, select by index you can select by value you can select by visible text you can also deselect by index deselect by value deselect by visible text you can deselect all the options right then you can get all selected options. You can get options. You can get first selected option. So these are the various uh, select 
methods that are available okay. in right so you will you will okay. automate using Understood. yeah select class right? select class correct correct um, <clears throat> what if uh, is having a multi select drop down uh, is it the same for the multi select drop down yeah it it depends what kind of drop down it is there right now if you are having a multi select drop down right so so what we were discussing is for single thing now if you have multi selected single. yeah multi selected then also you can do it okay so for those what you will have to do okay. is uh, once you will determine whether the web element is multi select or not you can use select classes various select methods on the multiple values you intend to select right so that is that is the first thing that you will have to identify whether it is a multi select one or it is a single select one single select yeah okay got it. okay then mm. Mm. The second question. Okay. Now, let's say you are seeing some alert in the Selenium. Uh, you are you are seeing some kind of alert in the website. Okay. Now you have to automate that particular alert. So how will you automate that alert in the website? I think there is one method called uh, alert, alert switch to. Correct, correct. Or uh, alert. I uh, mean, uh, there would be uh, depend on the options which are mm -hmm. the included on the, that alert pop up. Right, so, right. Okay, or cancel. So we have to click on that mm -hmm. uh, by invoking the alert dot uh, okay or mm -hmm. uh, cancel. Yeah, not okay. Method. But alert yeah alert is actually an interface in a selenium dot accept i think yes yes perfect perfect now you are talking it perfectly dot accept. yeah yeah narmata can you please uh, hold on for 10 minutes so alert is actually an interface which will provide the few of the methods in selenium right for example dismiss is to click on the cancel button of the alert and then you are telling about dismiss. accept right except is about except. clicking on the ok button of the alert right then you can also use uh, get text right that is to capture the alert message yes yes right so these are the kinds of methods that you will have in the alert interface right then there is also void send keys you can yes. send some data send uh, some data to that alert box right so that is also possible okay okay have you have you come across a memory leak exception and if yes how do you resolve this kind of issue memory leakage no i have mm -hmm. not come across it mm -hmm. exception okay okay so memory leakage is nothing but it's a kind I of i don't know about it yeah yeah no worries so memory leakage is nothing but whenever the memory that has been used uh, more compared to the given limit Right, maybe in an application, whenever uh, some people are using, when it it generally happens these kind of issues if it's a .NET kind of an application or if it's a C sharp based application, right? So generally these kind of things happens, right? And and let's say if this question is asked to you in an interview, and then you have to answer that how do you uh, face how do you test these kind of issues, right? So you can tell that you can uh, verify the CPU usage when you are running the application right of the server and then you can check what kind of at what which particular point at which particular functionality at which particular on which particular screen that memory is being more consumed compared to the given limit right so those things you can answer okay what is xpath uh, XPath is a special type of the uh, uh, selectors uh, which are used to inspect the web elements yeah. on the application. Okay. Narmata, can you please uh, wait for 10 minutes? Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Preeti. Uh, Narmata, can you please wait for 10 minutes? Yeah, we'll sure. Connect at 540. Okay.
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes. Sorry, Preeti. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to build an X path uh, mm -hmm. using the different uh, elements uh, which are present uh, mm -hmm. for the design of the web mm -hmm. uh, application. So by uh, I'm not able to uh, uh, mm -hmm. exactly recall it, but we have to uh, build it, uh, build the X path using the IDs or mm. the uh, uh, tag names. Uh, so export names. is nothing but it's a type of a locator, right? Yes. And which are the types of XPath? Uh, absolute XPath and relative XPath. Okay. And which one will you use? Absolute one? Right? You will use absolute XPath more compared to relative. Relative. Uh, yes, sir. Are you sure? Uh, actually, we don't perform this uh, mm -hmm. so much. So I'm not able to recall it. Okay, right now. no worries. So relative XPath will be used more compared to absolute XPath because relative XPath is actually reliable. Right? And when, when this question is asked to you in an interview, you can give different types of XPath locators you have. Right? So again, in XPath locator also, uh, you can get ID, class name. So at the rate, those things you can write, okay? So that yes. is there for absolute XPath, relative XPath also done. Okay, which are the, uh, okay. Okay, what is, what is Jenkins? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I haven't worked on it. I okay. don't know about it. Okay, no worries. No worries. Right. Okay. okay. Let's say if you had a client I... meeting. Yeah, yes, Preeti, you were telling something? I think it is a framework uh, in which, oh. the, uh, which helps to do the continuous integration and continuous doing, yeah. uh, sorry, yeah. continuous testing kind of the Correct. Uh, um, it's a tool. It's a tool. Yeah, it's a tool. Yeah. It's not a framework which will help you to this uh, schedule CI CD pipeline, right? Schedule automatic run of the automation, right? So those all things can be handled via Jenkins. You Jenkins. Yeah, you were on the right track, right? Now, let's say you had a client meeting, okay? But they did not provide you any technical documentation or any technical requirement brd or frd right now how will you proceed with the testing you have an application you had a client meeting with them and they have asked you to uh, start the testing right so but you don't have any brd or frd with you so how will you start uh, on the application uh, yes how will you start the, testing the I will first yeah I will first explore the entire application and will check the uh, high level uh, modules and functionalities contents in it and will uh, cross check whether that are working properly. Hmm. What else? I will test those. It's mm -hmm. not interesting. Okay. So you will test on a high level application from a high level perspective but what kind yes. of testing you will perform what kind of testing you will perform exploratory testing exploratory testing yes yes correct correct you'll perform exploratory testing right okay okay yes. Preeti I am done with the interview do you have any questions for me uh, yes sir uh, what, are, what is the feedback for me uh, where should I mm -hmm. improve myself okay uh, see, I think from manual testing perspective, any scenario based question, which we just covered, then earlier also, we asked you some questions on test scenarios. So you were able to, you were able to give the answers confidently. Your, uh, you, your communication skills are too good, right? So there's no problem with the manual testing. You just have to improve on the automation yes. side, maybe Gone because you are not doing, yeah, you are not doing automation, but what you can do is you can try learning automation on Saturdays and Sundays, right? 
Yes. Especially OOPS concepts, right? Overloading, overloading, overriding. These are few of the concepts and OOPS concepts are coming into the picture. Polymorphism, inheritance, right? What are packages in Java? So these kind of questions will be asked yeah. to you in an interview, right? You go in for Sorry, I'm not able to listen. Yeah. Okay, now, now is it audible? Your last sentence. Yes, yes. Yeah. So these OOPS kind of concepts, which are related to polymorphism, inheritance, these things you will have to prepare, right? These questions will be asked to you in any interview. Let it go. You go to TCS for interview. You go to for ex, uh, Accenture for interview, right? Any any company, whatever questions that we were covering, those were from the Accenture based interview questions, right? So you will definitely get these kind of questions. Mix of both. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, okay. Sir. Thank you so much and okay. wish you all the best for your career. Please uh, share your success story with us once you get selected in any company. Yes, right? sir. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, okay. all the best. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.